Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. And today we are going to review and compare two of the portable books e-reader dedicated devices. On the my left hand side, we have the books page, which is the latest iteration of their previously named Leaf uh, line of devices. And here we have the fifth iteration of their ultra portable six inch poke devices. So let's check them out, what they are like individually, how they compare to each other, because it's quite likely that people who are in this kind of market will be thinking about these two different and somewhat similar dedicated e-reader devices from Books. Full disclosure, Books has kindly sent me these review loan units, but these are just loan units. I don't get to keep them. I get to test them, use them, bring you guys the unboxing and review videos, and then these devices go back to Books or to another reviewer. So Books has no say in my opinion, or what do I say regarding these devices. So that level of independence is something that I really, really value a lot. And that level of independence is possible only through you, your guys' support. So, and I really, really do value that. So if you do like the content that I do, please do remember to like and to subscribe to the channel because we are nearing the 50,000 subscriber mark on my deep guide, which is an awesome, awesome milestone. And also, if you do like the independence of the my deep guide, I invite you to visit the mydeepguide.com slash shop, which is where you will be able to find a um, uh, MDO, which is my daily organizer, which is a hyperlinked PDF file that helps you organize your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, professional or personal needs. And you can also find the MMP, which is My Deep Guide Meeting Planner, which is also a hyperlinked PDF file, which helps you centralize, simplify and organize all of your meeting planning needs. If any of these sound interesting and you would like to learn more, please check out the links down in the description below. There you will find a ton of information where you can find out if either or both of these products are for you or not. And now onwards with the review and the comparison of the books page and the POKE 5. All right, and here are the two devices in question that we're gonna be focusing on today. The larger uh, seven inch e-ink reader from Books. This time it's called the Page, but this is basically an evolution of their Leaf 1 and 2 um, uh, line of devices, except that they've now changed the uh, naming convention to be Page. And this is Poke 5, the latest in the edition of um, yeah the family of six inch e-reader devices from Books, the ultra portable uh, devices. So let's first focus on the overview view of what each of these devices are and what are their main differences. Well, obviously the main difference is that POKE 5 is a 6-inch e-reader while the page is a 7-inch uh, e-ink reader. Both are black and white uh, e-ink equipped devices. Uh, both come with Android 11 and both run the same OS, Books OS version. So the functionalities that you can see are going to be pretty much exactly the same on both of them. There's gonna be small UI differences simply to accommodate for the smaller real estates of the uh, six inch screen, but the overall functionality is going to be the same on both of these devices. Now, these are just e-reader devices. So no, there is no stylus compatibility. There's no Wacom layer and there's no EMR. Uh, uh, therefore, there's no EMR compatibility on either of the two. So both of these are simply black and white dedicated e-reader devices. Poke 5 is the obviously cheaper option at 170 US dollars. It has a 6 inch e-paper screen, 300 ppi resolution density. It does have support for a magnetic covered and it does have support for micro SD card expandability. Has a built-in microphone. As far as the internal specifications goes, it has a Qualcomm quad core CPU with two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. But as I said, it has a micro SD card slot, so it is expandable. It has a 1500 milliamp battery, adjustable dual tone front lights, and is weighing at around 160 grams. And the thickness of it is at around 6.8 
millimeters. On the other hand, we have the page, which is obviously a larger device. So seven inch um, screen here. And that obviously makes it more expensive, but not only that, but also some of the internal components because it is a more powerful device than when compared to the Poke 5. So page comes in at the price of 250 US dollars. As I already mentioned, seven inch uh, e-ink screen. It has an octa-core Qualcomm CPU with three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. It is also expandable via the micro SD card slot. And this is the main difference when you compare it to the Leaf 2, because Leaf 2 was woefully underpowered and Page is basically addressing that by adding the octa-core CPU. The only thing that I think is a little bit on the lower side is I'm not entirely sure why they still went with um, three gigabytes of RAM, because four gigabytes bytes of RAM would have been a better choice um, for an Android 11 and especially if you're giving it an octa-core CPU why not go for the full you know bonanza thing and you know the 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 SOC thing that they just kind of dump into these de devices mm, I don't think that it would have made a major difference on the cost but then again you know you I, I guess there's every every kind of cost margin kind of cutting thing kind of counts. Continuing on with the specifications for the books page, it is equipped with a 2300 milliamp battery. It also supports a magnetic cover. It has built-in page turn buttons. It has a built-in speaker. And it's important to note that this is a mono speaker. This here is simply a microphone. There's, it, it just looks like a speaker, but it's not. And you can find a lot of misinformation online where people are saying in the specifications that it has stereo speakers. It does not. It has a mono speaker and the second one is just pretending to be that uh, while it is in actuality a microphone. Um, it has a G sensor for auto rotation, which the books uh, Poke 5 does not have. It also runs an Android 11, also has the adjustable dual tone front lights, and it weighs in at around 195 grams, so around 35 grams heavier. That's due to the size and the more massive battery. But interestingly, this one is only six millimeters thick. So this one is 0.8 millimeters thinner than the Poke 5. So for me, that's something that's kind of an important consideration when thinking about the portable, uh, ultra portable e-reader devices. And um, definitely the size is an important consideration. The weight is an important consideration, but also for me, it's the thickness of it because a thinner device simply lends itself to feel better in the hand, especially for longer term use. And that is something that you definitely notice when you actually go from one to the other. In terms of the design, Poke 5 is a st standard Poke uh, device, but it has changed uh, over time. My longtime favorite books portable e-reader was actually Poke 2. And let me just fetch it so that we can compare the two, what the changes in design have actually occurred over time. So here we are, here's my years, years old, trusty old Books Poke 2, and this is the latest iteration Books Poke 5, a much more modern and newer device. And I don't know about you, but right out of the bat, I think that the Poke 2 still looks fresher and it has a much nicer overall design because of the color combinations and everything, while the Books 5 is simply dull black and it just has nothing exciting going on for it. And for me, I know that this is not going to be a thing for a lot of people, but for me, this is something that is important. And additionally, Books uh, Poke 2 is thinner, um, although it is slightly taller, very slightly taller, uh, and the width is pretty much identical. So with the Poke 5, you get it uh, to be a slightly shorter device, but slightly thicker, definitely more heavier, like uh, quite, quite a bit obviously heavier. But the major differences are that Book Spoke 2 not only looks nicer for my taste, wait, in, not really comparable as far as this design goes. This is exciting, this is nice, this is memorable. This is something that I want to interact with even years after actually having used it. This, not so much. This is just 
just a thing. So yeah, as far as the design goes, I think that the books poke uh, line and poke five especially is going backwards. It's more boring, it's more bland, it's thicker, it's heavier, and, but it is offering more performance. Definitely it is faster than the books poke two, but then again, the battery life on the poke two is better than on the poke five, etc. So I'm not really convinced about the direction where this one is going, because if we dial back like three, four years ago, this device, to me, if I were to choose between them, even at the same price range, I would definitely pick this one. And now in the secondhand market, you can actually get this much, much cheaper. Although granted, this is Android 9, this is Android 11, but then again, it's just an e-reader. Like it doesn't really matter that much uh, unless you actually go into the whole Play Store and start using it as apps and all of these kinds of things, then it is a consideration for sure. But yeah, design wise, I don't know. I prefer the book spoke too. As far as the layout of the device, we have a flush screen on top. We have a power button with the light indicator uh, yeah, on the top, nothing on either side. So no volume rockers, no page turn buttons. And on the bottom, we have the microphone, we have the USB-C slot, and we have the micro SD card slot as well. Nothing on the back. The material is fairly plasticky. And again, that is also a difference. This is kind of rubberized, gummified, and it's not that slippery. This is far more slippery. So for example, if I just take these two and I compared the angles, this one falls off while the books do, well, I have to go really, really forward and then it kind of falls off. So, and it also, this is a type of plastic that feels a lot nicer in a hand. It feels more premium. Um, that is not the case here. This is a more shiny, more clacky kind of plastic and it just feels cheaper while it's not a cheaper device. As far as the ergonomics go, well, uh, yes, it is shorter, but is that a good thing? Uh, I don't know. Again, when I'm comparing these to the longer bottom here on the Poke 2, which is basically where the size difference comes from. As you can see, the, the bezel is pretty much of the same dimensions. It's just at the bottom, you have a little bit more. That little bit actually makes a difference because it makes it a lot more comfortable to use, especially with one hand, because it has plenty of room for my thumb to comfortably hold the device. Combined with the lower weight and lower thickness, I prefer actually the ergonomics of the Poke 2, where the Poke 5 is always, I'm always lacking that little bit. So my thumb is always gonna be halfway resting on this device and the added thickness just doesn't make it that good. So yeah, I don't know. I, I just could not get this one to feel uh, effortless. I always had to be conscious of where my thumb is and how am I holding. And I was always consciously holding something in my hand. I was always being reminded of that. While after years of using this one, it really doesn't matter because even if you hold it like this way to, so, uh, to, to read it or portrait or landscape, it really doesn't matter. While the same thing is constantly true of this one, although it does lend itself a little bit better for the portrait type of reading, which is a good thing, but overall the ergonomics, yeah, the direction of the Poke 5, where it goes, I don't think that this is a uh, direction that is preferable for an ultra portable e-reader. And now let's talk about the books page. So this is the seven inch version or basically the, the successor to the Leaf 2. So Leaf 2, I liked in every possible way, except a couple of things. Uh, Leaf 2 did not have a space between the buttons. And unfortunately, this is exactly the same thing that we see on the page as well. So this could have been remedied if these buttons had a bit of a chamfer on the top edge so that your thumb can actually feel the difference between them. But right now, this edge between the two buttons is simply too discreet and uh, it makes you kind of always think 
which button you're gonna press and you can accidentally press the unwanted button. This is not a big thing, but then again, uh, my own personal preference is uh, bigger space in between the buttons or if you really didn't wanna change the housing and everything, which I totally understand because this is simply an upgrade, but they could have then solved that problem by adding a chamfering to these buttons so that the spacing between these buttons is actually physically bigger and that you can actually feel it and use it, especially in one-handed operation. The second thing is that this device lends itself really nicely for a landscape use. Because of this nice wide uh, surface here, it really is wonderful to use in a landscape format. But here as well, especially in landscape format, the close buttons here do not make sense. The ergonomically correct thing to have is something that the Kobo Libra has and the Kobo Sage have and the Kindle as well. So you get the spacing between these buttons so that they are equally comfortable to use and intuitive and easy to use without looking at something or second guessing yourself. However, that was the case in La uh, Page Leaf 2 and unfortunately it's the same case with the, um, sorry, Leaf 2 and this is uh, the same case with the Page. As far as the specific or, or layout goes, we have the flush screen on top, uh, buttons that I've already talked about. On the top or bottom, depends how you orient it, I, I use it this way, um, there's nothing on the top. On the side we have a USB-C, we have the mock speaker grill. As you can see, that's not a real speaker. There's only a hole here for the microphone. Micro SD card slot, and here is the real speaker, the mono speaker that we have there. On the bottom, we have the power button, or top, depending on how you orient the device, with the light indicator. And on the other side, we have nothing. Um, yeah, on, on the other side. On the back, we have this really nice kind of graffiti looking, modern, funky kind of addition to the back of the device, which is otherwise fairly, fairly simple. And again, we have this kind of semi shiny, plasticky feel of the back, but yeah, if I compare them, they're pretty much the same as on the Poke 5. So not really the best, but what really is nice to kind of feel is the uh, friction difference because this shiny kind of logo thing does have a little bit more friction than the rest of the uh, device. And then basically, yeah, the device holds fairly well in hand and you can approach extreme angles before it starts slipping. I think um, the thickness is pretty much the winner for me here because the six millimeter thickness is really, really nice balance for a device like this. And when combined with this nice wide uh, side, which makes it very, very comfortable to kind of hold and extremely easy to use in either landscape or portrait orientation, lefty, righty, doesn't matter, whatever you actually prefer, this device can actually accommodate for it quite, quite nicely. And uh, yeah, the thinness and the weight combined, it just feels like a really, really nice device and a really well-balanced device for a portable device, which was not the case with the Poke 5. Poke 5 feels a little bit like a, like a little brick. So overall, if we're comparing the um, design, physical or uh, yeah, physical design and the ergonomics of the devices, for me, despite the considerable 80 US dollars difference between the two, so that's, this is 30% more expensive than the Poke 5 is, but still, um, I think that the, uh, the, the ergonomic and the design differences are vastly in favor of the book's uh, page. So definitely it wins in that category for me. So let's talk a little bit about the screen properties of both of the dev these devices and make sure that the front light is turned off so that we have the same type of uh, uh, quality and then you can see that the screen whiteness is very very similar on both of them pretty much identical but the subjective impression here is that the page seems a little bit whiter simply because it has a thinner much much thinner bezel on three sides of it and also there's a larger screen larger portion of the screen itself and that gives off a brighter uh, impression at least for me when using them objectively i don't think that there is a, a big difference uh this one turned off uh but 
there is like a, a semblance of he's turning off because of the magnets <laughs> let me turn him around so that they're closer there we go but objectively i think that there is a difference between the whiteness and kobo sage does seem a little bit whiter than the poke 5. poke 5 has a little bit of a yellowish kind of tint to it which is not unpleasant but for an e-reader especially monochromatic one this is kind of the thing that you are looking for so for me that uh, default image screen brightness is definitely the winner on the books page as far as the reflectivity goes well it's anybody's game here it's a very very close race and uh, for all intents and purposes they have pretty much identical type of uh, reflectivity properties so it's anyone's game here so yeah it's it's really good performance on both of these devices as far as the image quality and readability goes well obviously per books page has an advantage here because of the bigger screen real estate so you will have bigger characters and you will be able to see more in a physical space and that will inherently create a difference in the perceived sharpness simply because more pixels are used or more ink cells are used to uh, draw a certain character that you are um, reading. Um, as far as the image quality itself goes, well, I can zoom in and here you can see the books page on the left hand side and the books poke 5 on the right hand side. The same uh, document, the same uh, everything and you can actually see what the difference is uh, in the image quality or in the character itself, the character quality between these two devices. Now if we take a look at a document that contains a lot of graphics and a lot of contrast as well, you can see that the, both devices are delivering pretty pretty good and equal type of image quality and clarity in this type of content um, yeah the white text pops quite nicely uh, against the black background and yeah the the rendering of the images is fairly uniform and nice and despite its really small size i think that poke 5 is able to deliver a very very nice image quality for sure ghosting performance uh, pretty much identical on both of them so you can see all of the same uh, remnants and also there's you know don't forget about the power of the neo reader on the books platform where you are able to adjust the contrast the um yeah enhancement of the dark darks whites and and all of these kinds of things so that you can fine-tune the image to your liking so you have that on both of these platforms however again uh, just from a purely physical standpoint uh, I think that the advantage the only advantage that here um, books page has is the size advantage as far as the image clarity image quality and image overall image performance they are pretty much the same thing the front light has the exact exact same type of functionality on both of the devices but there is a one really really obvious difference and that is in the quality of the front light so while both have intensity and color control uh, between the two um, yeah that's that's not something that you can uh, compare because this is poke 5 at its maximum front light and this is page at its maximum front light now while the intensity is definitely different that is not necessarily a plus you don't really need this much intensity of a front light uh, that the books uh, po books page has however what is really really important as a difference is the uniformity that is allowed between these two devices because even if I just lower the intensity from books page for example to this one so that they match roughly you can actually see that the uniformity of books page is far far better than the one that we see on the poke and on the poke you see this kind of color bleed and there's overall just a little bit of a grayness quality to it while the uniformity on the books page is really really good now in order to make this a fair comparison i'm gonna keep the books page at this same intensity so that you guys can actually see what uh, how they look at equal results so what i'm going to adjust now is i'm going to make it completely cold light 
well actually it's the opposite way good going because <laughs> even though these are fairly the same devices you can see that these two are just inexplicably just flipped pages so the nightlight and daylight is flipped uh, spaces between the two devices just inconsistencies like that that uh, yeah our book systems are simply riddled with these kinds of things and that's that's a different story but as far as the front light um, definitely goes here is how they look like and you can see that there's definitely that color bleed here while the uniformity is very nice on the books uh, page and if I uh, pump up the intensity. This is the maximum intensity that the page has of the cold light. Now if I switch it over to fully warm light and I do the same thing on the pay on the poke 5 and we try to match the uh, intensity. Now we're seeing that issue of the graininess. While this front light here on the page again really really nice and uniform on the poke 5 it is more greenish than yellowish we have this kind of uh, bleed here and overall it just does not look correct it doesn't look right and it's not even the, of the correct tint so this just is not good not good at all the front light is really quite bad on the poke 5 while it is pretty much excellent on the page and this is the maximum intensity of the warm light on the page and here is again me trying to make a point that books poke 2 is a better device than the poke 5 and the poke 5 is a step in the wrong direction and now it seems it was the wrong direction in terms of the design and the weight and all of that kind of stuff and as far as the screen goes and in this case the front light this is most definitely a step in a horrifically wrong direction because here we have poke 2 years and years old device and this is poke 5 which is supposed to be better but look at the state and the difference between the warm light at maximum intensity on POKE 2 as opposed to on the intensity uh, on the warm light on the POKE 5. That greenness, not only just the intensity thing, but the green aspect of that front light is just really, really bad. And if I lower the intensity on POKE 2, you can still see this is a warm light. This is not a warm light. This is something in between. Now, if we switch around and we go to the blue light, we again have the difference in intensity, uh, quite a lot of it. So we're going to try and lower this. Now the camera is, for whatever reason, because it's really dark, I guess, it's picking up way more blue than it is. So it's not as blue as the camera is shooting it right now. So it's a bit colder, uh, a bit more whitish than what you can see. But the, the essences are here. And if I put both at the maximum intensity, you can see that the uniformity of the front light on Poke 2, even after three, four years, however long I've already had it, I think around three years, um, is much better than what uh, POKE 5 is able to offer. And then we can just link them all together and see what the performance is when they are combined. So let's just uh, link this. I think they're linked. Yep. And this is the result that we have between these two devices. And I'm going to try and match the intensity of POKE 2 front light, maybe a little bit less something like this and then you can see how they look like and to me uh, in every respect the front light on the poke 2 is far far better than what we have on the poke 5. so in the screen category while the uh, image and reflectivity are pretty much on par between these two devices the front light difference is so so far in advantage for the books page that the, the, the poke 5 is really not a does not have a a good front light and it almost seems to the point of being defective when you actually have so much color bleed and that the warm light is actually green and when you actually compare it to a years older device you know three generations older device uh, and it beats it like hands down as far as the front light goes yeah not 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 a good side of the poke 5 all right so what about the performance well um page has 
twice the amount of cores and has one more gigabyte of RAM available to it. And while that is definitely meaningful on the paper, it really uh, comes down to the real world performance. So let's just see how the navigation works on both of them. Now, both of them have the refresh rate, I believe that I've set it to the speed setting, right? So this is the speed setting of navigation around the, the devices so that they can offer the equal type of performance because most of the times you will be in speed mode because it offers quite a fair kind of uh, balance between ghosting and performance. Now, if I just tap, you can see that we're opening the folders and navigating through the system and the folders and trying to find things pretty much in the same way on both of these devices. So now let's open up uh, one of the, the documents that I have not opened previously. They're opening up very, very similarly. So let's see if we can navigate the pages. This is pretty much identical as far as navigation goes. Access to the system here. So let's change refresh or actually let's first change the formatting so that we can have a page width fit and then we can see a bit more. Yep, even when it's fitted, the performance is pretty much exactly the same. So let's say that maybe in the formatting, I wanted to adjust the contrast and maybe do a little bit more of dark color enhancement. Let's just do it to the maximum because this is a fairly pale document and still the performance is pretty much exactly the same. And let's finally switch to the speed refresh mode. Uh, so let's go the rocket or in my case, uh, I always see it as a chicken icon. Um, so in speed mode, yeah, the, the general navigation is pretty much exactly the same on both devices. So let's open up a different uh, device here or different document. So let's exit from both of these. Let's open up something that has combined images as well. And let's see. So this is the first page already. Okay, so now let's have them exactly the same on both and see what the performance is like. I think that the ghosting is maybe a smidge better on the page. It seems like it, especially when we're dealing with images. But as far as the performance goes, that's uh, really pretty much effectively it's the same thing. Now let's see what is it with the buttons. So let's try and find that, that one. Okay, so next, uh, I didn't press it. So next. Again, doesn't really make much of a difference whether you navigate via the buttons or via the touch. And the performance between these two in the native Neo Reader is the same. So now let's uh, exit here and see if I have already installed <coughs> on a Kindle app. I haven't. So I'm going to install that. But let's well, while we're talking about installation, let's go into Google Play Store on both of them. So let's see where my Play Store is. So let's see how fast it opens up. Okay, so this is where we should start seeing the difference between octa core and a quad core between these two. Um, but there's also Oh, there's an issue with my Wi Fi. Okay, we need to rectify that. All right, so now both of the devices are hooked to the same Wi Fi. So let's see what do we get now. All right, so now we get proper <laughs> uh, performance. And again, here we have fairly similar performance. Let's switch to A2 on both of them, because that is naturally what you would probably use in uh, these types of apps. And Yep, scrolling is okay and nice. And here again, I get the impression that the book's page whiteness is brighter and the front light is turned off. So it is the same conditions, but yeah, it is something like that. So let's see how the performance is when we are searching for. All right, I got the Wi Fi to actually work properly and to forget the uh, bad Wi Fi. So they're no longer auto connecting to the bad one. So now we have both YouTube 
uh, here and we can install them on both the devices and see what the installation speed will be. They're both hooked up to the same network so we can see how they actually function as far as the uh, download speeds goes. As you can see this one is quite a bit faster. No, well, yeah, there's inconsistencies here. So they are trying, yeah, but we're starting to see the advantages of the four extra cores and one extra uh, gigabyte of RAM on the books page. So POC5 is kind of lagging behind right now. And I think this is going to be a cumulative thing. So we'll see when they finish. So let's just wait a little bit and see how long it takes for them to install YouTube. So YouTube installed on books page. And now we're still waiting for the poke 5 to finish and this is clearly the advantage of the extra cores and the extra gigabyte of ram so overall performance definitely the winner uh, as the system-wide performance the winner will be the page as you can see so now it's done on here as well um, but in the reader department it was not such a humongous difference now i'm going to install kindle m on this and then we can actually compare the two because i already have kindle here all right so now i got kindle on both of them logged in and let's see opening up a document the same book between the two um, let's not synchronize and this is how the performance is on both of them so let's see like this so that is the kindle app that's actually doing this and strangely i'm getting more of a miss on the books uh, page mainly because of the camera angle and what i'm doing so the Kindle app on books devices always has that issue because you can't really turn off that uh, animation fully, no matter what I do. Uh, but you can turn your uh, display quality to something different and then it becomes a little bit better. Now, some users say that they found a way to actually disable this. And then I try that option and it never actually works for me. So obviously, Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but what I'm trying to compare is even if I am doing something wrong, I'm doing it equally wrong on both of the devices. So you will see that the performance is what the performance is like on both of these devices. You can pinch to zoom to change the scale of the characters on both of them and the performance, this is in speed mode, is quite okay. Let's see how it is in a normal mode. So if we pinch to zoom, well, actually, yeah, it's equally messy, but it did clean up really well. So you can easily adjust the size on both of these so that they can actually work as you would expect them to. And the final thing that I am going to, whoa, that took a while. Okay, so performance in general on POC5 is uh, lower. So let's try and switch to a dark uh, theme so that we see how does that uh, look like. Maybe it's in more or in layout. Was that in layout? Yeah, layout. Even though that's a theme. Okay, so now we're turning to black and you can see that the performance, it just simply takes a lot longer for the um, POKE 5 to perform these things. I'm going to switch them to speed uh, display mode simply because of the animation itself. And you can see how this uh, looks like. And you can see that, uh, yeah, POKE 5 is occasionally struggling and the inverted scheme really doesn't work that well on these devices simply because of the refresh rate so if you want it to be really good what you're looking for is regal because regal is the one that's always going to give you the best ghosting performance or it's supposed to give you the best ghosting performance uh, but it's going to give you the worst performance overall and as you can see when you switch to regal mode there is no ghosting going to be uh, you won't have any ghosting issues but unless you find a way to get rid of the animation itself, then um, yeah, you, you, you will not have a good time. And for me, it's a really, really distracting thing that you have this white flash that clears out everything and then everything kind of comes into place. So that is not something that you're going to see if you are using these apps in um, the regular theme. 
right? So if I'm still in uh, Regal refresh mode and then we switch here, you don't quite see it, but you still have the flash every time you switch the page. And this is the reason why I don't really use the Regal refresh mode in Kindle, for example, because that flash is, uh, for me, extremely distracting. So I would suggest either normal or speed mode when using it, but definitely not the inverted mode because you've seen the ghosting performance. As far as the overall performance goes, um, yeah, in everything, in all of the things, uh, page is going to be uh, from marginally faster to significantly faster, especially when we're talking about uh, system operations and things like that. But the thing that's actually worth uh, keeping in mind is that in Neo Reader itself, these two will flip pages and display pages pretty much in an identical fashion and at the identical speeds. But overall, as far as the performance goes, my obvious winner is the Books page. As far as the battery performance goes, well, uh, Books page already has an advantage because it has a higher capacity battery over the POKE 5, but I performed the standardized tests so that you can know what they are, and it's very easy to actually do that on on uh, the books devices in Neo Reader because you have the auto page turn function. So I set it, as you can see, to 60 minutes, uh, 20 seconds per page. So it waits 20 seconds until it flips a page and a total number of pages. Then you set your conditions with the uh, Wi-Fi on. And yeah, you can, uh, what I was varying was the intensity of the front light. And uh, the results of these tests are that with the front light set at 50% on both of these, um, the page was spending at around 3% of battery life per hour, which uh, results in around uh, estimation of 33.3 hours per charge of continuous page flipping um, with the front light at 50%, while the POKE 5 was actually spending 5% of uh, per hour of battery charge, which uh, amounts to around 20 hours per charge at 50%. But something to keep in mind is that 50% of the front light on the page is way, way brighter than it is on the POKE 5. So you are more likely to actually utilize the 50% on the POKE 5 while you would probably utilize less uh, intensity of a front light because of the front light, yeah, it's much brighter on the on the page, and that means that in order to actually get the same illumination, illumination uh, qualities, you would get even more of an advantage of battery life on the books page, and that is true for the second test, which was the front light at 100%. That, of course, is going to increase the uh, uh, consumption, but it's going to be interesting here because with 100% front light, Page was spending 8% of battery life per hour, which estimates at around, uh, total is around 12 and a half hours of page flipping per charge, while the POKE 5 was spending roughly at around 5% again at the front light um, on 100%, which again gives it a rough estimate at around 20 hours per charge. But that is again explained by that super low intensity front light, so the maximum here is nowhere near the maximum of what you can see on the uh, page itself. Then I would turn the front light all the way off and the battery performance or uh, consumption uh, page was uh, spending at around 1% or less uh, of battery life per hour, which means that you're going to get about 100 pages, 100 hours worth of page flipping per charge or more, while the POKE 5 was spending at 3% per hour, which means that uh, it would total at around 33.3 uh, hours per charge without the front light. So the obvious advantage in pretty much every respect is, yeah, in battery life as well, goes to books page. As far as the overall functionality and um, yeah, books OS functionalities goes, it's pretty much identical on both of them. You will have small, this you know, kind of 
oddities such as this one where the warm and cold light is flipped and it has flip spots and things like that the default icons are going to be different different and the defaults are going to be different so that is something that you're going to see uh, between these two devices but the core functionalities are all identical and you will be able to find pretty much most of the options other than the customization of these buttons because these buttons can be customized to be volume up and down in different apps if you want to or pay and can be of course used for page turning and slightly different functionalities as well and unless i am mistaken uh books page came with the google play store by default and this one i had to enable if i am not uh, mistaken i really do apologize because i review so many of these devices and it's been a long time since i unboxed these i can't really remember if one of them had to have it enabled i seem to think that maybe Maybe books 5 had to but I might be mistaken either way uh, you can get the Google Play Store to uh, work on both of them and then you have the full Android 11 in this case functionality which means that you can install your Kindle you can install the Kobo you can install the audible you can install uh, your library apps that you may want to have you can you can even use uh, web browsing on these you can use it for any different kinds of uh, purposes but please keep in mind that these devices do not have the um, books dedicated uh, GPU speed up uh, um, processor in there so you will have default e-ink performance which is good but not as good as the tab devices so you should treat these as ordinary readers with which you can actually go online if you want to and check something out or download the PDF or things of that nature and of course you can access your OneNote you can access your uh, Google Drive you can access your Dropbox and all of these things one thing that is different as far as functionality goes is that Poke 5 does not have a speaker but it is audio capable so you can hook up a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones to it and then you can still use Spotify Audible or um, yeah, any kind of music app or anything like that on it as well so it is audio capable Capable, same audio capabilities as the uh, books page has except that it does not have a physical speaker so you will need to use a Bluetooth device to um, yeah, take the uh, ownership of that. So as far as functionalities goes I think they're pretty much on par because they're using the same system which means that they are equally confusing and equally good and bad uh, in both situations but there's a slight advantage in this case for the books page simply because the larger format uh, takes better utilization of the book's uh, UI while this small format sometimes is a little bit too cramped for the icon sizes and just it's the book's UI is struggling a little bit on these uh, smaller formats and you can actually feel that on the book's poke five and last category would be the included magnetic covers um yeah don't get confused like which side is which you have to kind of pay attention so uh, the colored uh, um, is inside black is on the outside and the books is on the outside as well and you will see the indentation here where the buttons should go so that helps you with the orientation where you should put your device because if you try to put it like this it's not going to hold and things like that so but if you do try to place it properly then it slots into place properly and is held magnetically uh, normally. I think that this is a very very nice package. The magnet flips back and holds perfectly on the back as well. The device has auto wake up, it has auto rotation of course, and it's extremely easy to take the device out and put it back into the cover itself. Just flip it back and that's it. Uh, as a total package, because of the thinness of the books page, this is a really nice package overall. And despite its seven inch size, yes, you get a little bit more of weight because of the magnets. So that's something that makes it a little bit more weighty, but uh, still, I think in a very, very much acceptable uh, um, category. And it's a really good thing that you can charge the device normally while it's plugged 
plugged in and all of these kinds of things so very practical and very stylish and very nice looking um, cover the only thing that I would consider as a negative is that there is no stitching here uh, and that is something that we used to have but we no longer have so that's uh, that poses a question about the longevity of these portable devices and I think it's important especially for these because these are portable devices which means it's gonna go in and out of pockets bags and things like that which means that these corners are gonna get frayed and that's where this stitching becomes actually important with the books poke 5 we have pretty much the same story here the colored uh, uh, side is the inside the one with the books is the front and that's pretty much it the device fits magnetically and closes magnetically and uh, functions perfectly it has magnetic hold it has auto wake up and auto shutdown and the magnets hold on the back so all of the functionalities are exactly the same for the poke 5 equally easy to actually put the device into the magnetic cover uh, yeah flip it closed and actually use it that way things that i really do like is basically uh yeah how portable and how nice looking it is it's like a very nice little wallet and one thing that i do not like that much is that it depends how the magnet actually holds the device but it can happen that the power button will actually protrude from the edges of the cover now you can of course push it down so that that doesn't happen but it will happen that you basically just set your device and as i've set it you can see that the power button is poking here and that's something that could cause a little bit of trouble maybe when it's in your pocket or in your uh, uh, bag or something that this uh, button can be unintentionally pressed um, other than that the same comment goes for stitching as I said portable devices the edges are gonna get frayed and in the case of poke 5 I really don't understand why we don't have that because this is my cover from poke 2 and here we have stitching and this is a very very much used device like covered all over the place so this one is with the adhesives which as you can see after three years they're still working perfectly no problems here and this cover is lighter um, yes it's not as convenient as the magnets obviously but because it has magnets it's lighter it's thinner and overall the package itself I mean when I just place the poke 5 here and press it and I compare the two I'm gonna get a for my my taste at least a more stylish looking uh, overall device with this one again auto wake up and auto uh, sleep it doesn't have magnet to hold it in the front it doesn't have magnet to hold it in the back so those are obviously the negatives but overall I like the old uh, uh, style and the old and stylish sensitivities that they were actually using and the build quality actually of the old uh, um, uh, poke 2 cover than what we actually have here as far as just purely um, yeah functionality goes with the magnetic stuff definitely advantage here and as, long as longevity goes not entirely sure yeah but we will see but overall it's not a bad package at all and if we're compa comparing the two they're pretty much identical so identical positives and identical negatives on both of them so here we are both of these devices now kind of covered in detail these categories that i consider are of most e or biggest importance for a device of this type and it's the conclusion time and this time i'm going to do it yeah uh, combined so we're going to uh, combine the cons of uh, each of the devices so first the conclusion cons for poke 5 I believe that it is overall a regression in the poke family of devices design I am NOT a fan of having this smaller line I'm not a fan of it actually being a little bit thicker and weightier these are not big things don't get me wrong these are definitely not big things but at $170 it's not a neglectable amount of money so you have to kind of think about these things especially because because you have poke 3 you have poke 4 which is still using the old design which was kind of nicer and especially if you want to go back you have poke 2 and you can get on secondhand market something that um, yeah brings uh, pretty much the same functionalities a lower performance definitely big low performance in the poke 5 but better battery life better front light in the case of poke 2 and better ergonomics so overall 
This is not the most ergonomically designed or most comfortable e-reader to uh, use. Um, the biggest uh, um, yeah, con of this device is going to be the front light. The front light is really, really bad on the Poke. Five. I'm not also a fan of the battery life. So if you have like this bigger kind of device and bigger thickness and it's a bit of a chunkier thing, then that's that's a fine thing to have if you know that you know you know why you have it because there's like tons of battery life and then it just works. But that's not really the case here. And again, partially it goes to that uh, front light. So I don't know. It's just not doesn't seem like a well balanced or thought out device. And the performance. While the performance generally is good, I think it would have benefited definitely, maybe not from more cores, but from extra RAM. Absolutely, you would have a lot of benefit on device device on this device. So if you intend to use it for anything other than, you know, just just reader type of things, which is what it's intended for. But if you intend, it has capabilities to do more. So if you intend to use it for that, expect quite a bit slower performance on the Poke 5. Now, on the cons for the uh, books uh, page. Well, with the Leaf, there was, um, yeah, one major con was the performance, and this has been addressed with the books page. So there's really not that many cons that I can think of for the books uh, page, other than already addressed uh, lack of spacing between the physical buttons um, for, yeah, page turn, volume up and down, or whatever it is that you may want to do. But other than that, this device is really, it's really, really difficult to find any significant cons on it. Um, so those are the specific cons. Now, unified cons, the cons that are exactly the same on both of these, is basically they're coming with Android 11. Uh, for a dedicated reader, that really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. But these devices do come with uh, Google Play Store capabilities. Out of the box or just being enabled, doesn't matter. You are able to have Google Play Store then. And then, um, yeah, if we're, if we're in 2023, and considering these devices then an Android 12 at least would have been a better thing to see. But that's not a huge uh, con, but it is something to definitely keep in mind. For me, the biggest unified con would be the book's UI and the inconsistencies of the UI and things like that. Granted, it is getting better over time. It feels more like three steps forward, two steps back type of thing. And there's a lot of distractions and a lot of noise introduced with the um, updates on books platforms. And that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. And there's a lot of, uh, the learning curve can be quite a bit tricky. And this is especially a problem for dedicated e-readers, which should be focused on simplicity. And I know that quite a lot of users have a hard time grasping uh, how to make the library work, how to get the transfer things to, to, to make them work, etc., etc. So yes, that is an obstacle. But in my mind, uh, especially in the case of books page, that is an obstacle that's worth uh, overcoming because what you actually get once you do uh, get used to the yeah, UI and the uh, the way to do things on uh, books devices, then you actually get a lot of bang for your buck. As far as pros go, well, for the books uh, poke. Five, um, yeah, I, I actually had to struggle a little bit to find pros, to be honest, for this device. But here are the obvious pros. So the obvious pro is it has 32 gigabytes of storage and they are expandable via the micro SD card slot. So that is definitely a pro. Another pro is that you have a very, very good screen quality, screen reflectivity uh, um, uh, performance on this device. And even despite it's really, really small size uh, because of the Neo Reader's formatting capabilities and things like that. You're quite, quite easy. It's really easy to format it and to use. Even tiny PDF documents can be used in landscape format to fit the width and then navigate. So you can actually get a lot out of this tiny screen format. So that is most definitely a big uh, pro. And that is the most important pro that you can actually consider because this is primarily a reader device. Other than that, I don't have anything specifically about this device that I would consider a pro. There are unified pros that I'm going to uh, definitely address. But as far as individual pros for the device, yeah, those are the only two, the, 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 the micro SD card, even though that's a unified pro. So basically the only thing that's good is the, um, yeah, the image quality 
quality for such a small screen size. Now, as far as the book's page goes, um, I think that it has all of the pros of the book's Leaf 2, which is the form factor is extremely good. The thinness, the ergonomics, the way it handles, the way it's versatile for portrait, lefty, righty, the uh, uh, landscape organization, everything except the positioning of these buttons is extremely good on the book's page. The thinness and the weight and the format is just really, really easy to use. And um, yeah, now it has been improved with an octa-core CPU with three gigabytes of RAM. I think it should still have had four gigabytes of RAM, but even so, this is a significant step up in performance when compared to the book's page. And that is a very, very big pro. It has a micro SD card slot as well, so that it upgrades your uh, um, uh, overall uh, storage size or that you can swap out your libraries, same as you can on the Poke uh, 5. Um, the speaker sounds okay for what it needs to do and all of these things. So overall, I think that this is just uh, from pretty much every respect, a really, really, really good device. Other specific uh, positives for the books page are also the image quality is really, really good and the screen contrast, clarity and brightness is very, very nice. A particularly good pro on the books uh, page is also its front light. It is exceptionally nice, uh, of a really nice quality, uniformity is great as you've seen, and it's really, really good. And finally, the battery performance on the books page is also extremely good, unless you pump that front light all the way to the maximum, but because of that brightness, you really won't need to. So while you're actually keeping it in a lower, uh, um, yeah, let's say, 15 to 30 percent i really doubted that you're gonna have more than that so you're probably looking at 50 plus hours with the front light and as we've seen from the test without the front light it's like a hundred hours or more of continuous reading time which is exceptionally good for a reader of this uh, type and coupled with the screen that's already quite bright and quite crisp and clear that's that's a really nice thing to have now, overall pros on both of these, well, they come with an Android 11 uh, system, which brings uh, versatility and customizability to it. They all are capable of using the Google Play Store. They both have the micro SD card slot uh, uh, capabilities, the Bluetooth functionality that actually gives you the ability to hook up even a keyboard if you wanted, or, um, you know, uh, peripherals of some sort. So overall, when I'm comparing these two, yes, they are in different categories, but people will be thinking about between these two devices. Should I go for the 6 inch 170 US dollar Poke 5 or should I go for the 200 significantly more expensive 250 US dollar um, 7 inch books uh, page? If what you're looking for is one of the most versatile and comprehensive and usable e-readers on the market today, it's extremely difficult to beat books page. When we compare these two, I mean, books page basically dominates the uh, Poke 5 in pretty much every respect. So the only reason why you would actually consider Poke 5 is because it's physically smaller. But my argument would be then, well, why not get a secondhand older iteration of the Poke uh, device, maybe Poke 3 or Poke 2 or something like that. I, I really have uh, difficulty to kind of justify why the fifth iteration would be uh, a regression in several different categories, especially when compared to the old books Poke 2. Um, Page, on the other hand, this is an iteration of the Leaf devices and it is a significant step up and it improves and just kind of makes things better. So even though it's called Page, this is technically speaking a Leaf tree and this is an improvement in every respect. So yeah, um, whether you're thinking between Leaf 2 or Page, go for the Page. If you're thinking between uh, Poke 5 and a Page and you're not really stuck on having the smallest footprint and you don't mind the slightly wider and slightly taller uh, uh, footprint of the uh, books page. I mean, effectively, the only thing that's different is the width because the height difference, not so much. It's a tiny, tiny bit of a difference. And um, the thickness, we have, as we've seen, this one is considerably thinner. So yeah, for me, pretty much in every single category, I think that, uh, yeah, books page dominates this battle. 
I hope that you liked the video and that you found it informative and useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel so that we can ding that 50,000 mark of subscribers even faster. As far as I'm concerned, I think that the books page is a really, really good device. It's very, very hard to find too many faults on this device. Leaf 2 was slow, genuinely so. This one is no longer like that and you basically have pretty much all the stuff that you would want in an e-reader plus you get an extra ton of stuff as well the only thing well only two things to keep in mind is basically a steep le learning curve which is definitely a negative if you're looking for just an e-reader so that's something that you have to be prepared um, but it is something that you can overcome and that you can actually then go to love and use this and also keep in mind that uh, kindle app is never gonna pr provide you with the same reading experience and smoothness as it does on a kindle device because simply that's an Android app uh, issue that's how it's made it's not being optimized for e-ink devices and it's very very unlikely that uh, Amazon is about to do that because they know that it will be just helping the competition out but the Kobo app actually works really really well and it doesn't really make much of a difference when you switch between a Kobo device and a Kobo app so those are the things to kind of keep in mind and also yeah these buttons if that's something that affects you that there's no spacing between them something to keep in mind but honestly other than that books page is a really really good e-reader book five you're you're better getting a second hand older device definitely like poke 3 or something like that this i don't think they justifies the price tag or you know the fifth iteration should show growth maturity and evolution and poke 5 doesn't show that all right thank you so much for watching stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next video Bye.